Renee LeBlanc? Yes? No. Yes what? I, I have not spoken to him, but I, uh, I do not believe that he will speak to me. Well, certainly speak with him. Okay, all right. How about... Um... <laughs> Yeah, no, you can't. I, I don't consent, consent to. This is not an open hearing. It's a pretrial conference. Uh, if you want to do that at a trial, that's fine. You can. That's up to the judge. But I don't consent to it. Well, and it doesn't matter if you consent. Okay, actually, you're having a conversation with somebody. Your government bureaucrat okay. should be yeah. on the job and on the. You record. can go ahead and ask for a trial date. I'll push it down for trial. Okay. Thank you. So they are pretty much refused. Matthew Lyons, please. Wow. So okay. This is an interesting legal case in which. Matthew Lyons? Oh, she can meet with me by herself or one other person. But so that's much for transparency, not, huh? It's not going to be uh, your name, so have a nice you day. Still like to What's your name, sir? Matthew here? here. Yeah. My chief's in the office right now. You probably go talk to him. You police officer? No, I am. Yeah, so you should be on the job on the record then, just like every other government bureaucrat. Thank you, buddy. How are you doing? Vint Bogus. Vint Bogus. Hello. Vint Bogus. How are, How are you? Good. All right, so we got a speed trial, looks like. Um, so what's the, what's the issue? Um, well, I don't believe that I was going as fast as he said I was. I don't know if his ra radar wasn't um, calibrated or what, but he claims that I was going over 50 in a 30 zone. Yeah, I think he said 54. Yeah, and he claims that he took that down a notch so it would, like he was doing me a favor because I mm -hmm. would get a larger fine that wouldn't pull mm -hmm. my license. And, uh, yeah, he said the. It's a, he wrote for the 20 over instead of right. 24 over. And frankly, I feel like that's an insult to my intelligence because when I'm when I'm the only car out on the road at 1 in the morning going through a small town where I know there will be a cop on Route 101, I'm not going to be going 50 downtown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um... Okay, well, we can have a trial. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any uh, any offers that usually? Uh, well, I mean, the officer the officer already gave her a break. Okay, so she's looking at unfortunately one hundred three thirty three. Um. So I can I can ask the officer, you know, do you have any? Looks like you have a pretty good record. I don't see any. Uh, first ticket. I know sometimes offers of a defensive driving course or such are offered. That, that, that is done. Let me let me talk to the officer. Although I'm not oh. too interested in that. I do have a full-time job, so. Okay. Well, I'll just have a trial then. Okay. Okay. Excellent. See you in there. Renee LeBlanc. You're ready for trial, Your Honor. Who's this waiting for Mr. Blank? Um, this is Garrett, who's in counsel. I'm Garrett Ian, I'll be standby counsel for Mr. Blank. And what's your relation uh, here? Um, I have some experience with court procedures, and Mr. Blank asked for my assistance if needed. Well, I don't have, I don't have any, uh, so you know, appearance was filed, uh, no motion for appearance was filed that I know of. Well, I mean, there are rules for how you have somebody represent you, Mr. Um, Blank. <clears throat> you usually need to have some background about the person who's going to be assisting you. So, um, he's not representing. I guess that's the concern. You know, we don't know anything about this gentleman. Well, I don't plan on having him represent me. Um, like you said, just stand by counsel. Um, I plan on asking them questions myself. Well, if you want to sit there at the table, you're welcome to, sir. But I, I don't think you're going to be able to participate in this hearing. I concur. Okay, so uh, both of you are welcome to have a seat there. 
Are you all set to proceed then? Uh, all set, Sergeant. Sergeant. Okay. So Please call okay. Officer George Zanakis. Right up here, please. Okay. Would you raise your right hand there, please? You swear your testimony here will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do, Your Honor. You have a seat if you would. Would you begin, sir, by stating your full name and spelling your last name, please? So, Officer George Zanakis, last is spelled X E N A K S. Go ahead, Sergeant. How are you employed? The Peterborough Police Department. And how long have you been so employed? <clears throat> For two years. Okay, and how long have you been a police officer? Stayed in Hampshire just over four years. Okay, give you a brief recitation of your education, training, experience as it relates to law enforcement. I attend the New Hampshire 260th Part Time Academy, the 158th Full Time Academy, uh, taking numerous months of courses and trainings after which I've been employed. Okay, encompassed within that training was your training on motor vehicle yeah. laws and enforcement? Yes. Okay. And in the part time academy, did you, were you trained on the use of radar? I was. Okay. And were you certified? Part time and then full time academy. Okay, so you've been certified two different occasions? I have. Okay. Uh, taking you back to May 26th, uh, 20, 2014. Uh, <coughs> Approximately 1.30, 1.39 in the uh, evening, in the morning. Uh, you worked for Peterborough PD? I was. Were you in uniform? I was. Were you in a mock cruiser? Yes, I was. Uh, okay. At about that time, anything out of the ordinary happened? I was conducting stationary radar on, uh, off of Wilton Road, just east of Granite, on the pull up. Okay, what road is that? That's Route 101 in Peterborough. Okay, also known as? Wilton Road. Okay. We ask the uh, court to take notice. You should notice that uh, Route 101 also has open roads away. It will, yes. Before you start your shifts, you run radar, you said? That's correct. Sir. Okay, what do you do? Is there anything you do as a normal course of conduct before your shift, during your shift? There is. As regards to radar? There is. What is that? It's to check the radar. And how do, you, how do you do that? Internally and using the tuning forks that's provided in each group. Okay, and did you do that in this evening? I did. Okay, and how was the radar working? It was functioning normally and properly. Okay, and which, uh, which radar were you using? It was 1A. So that would be in which car? Cruiser number 1. Okay. All right, so take me back about that time. What happened? I was uh, conducting stationary radar. I noticed a vehicle traveling uh, westbound on 101. Mm -hmm. uh, and it passed me at a speed of uh, 54 miles an hour. Passed me at that time. Okay, and, and how do you know? That's the speed? Uh, by my radar. Okay. And did you have clear tone? Clear tone, clear audio, clear visual. Was there, was there any other vehicles in the east side picture of the radar? There wasn't. Okay. Obviously, late at night. There wasn't. Not much traffic? Not, not that area, no. Okay. Um, so, describe where you were parked. Right off uh, Wilton Road, which is 101, is a dirt pull off just east of uh, Granite Street, uh, well into the 30 mile an hour zone. Awesome. Okay. And, and you say it's a 30 mile an hour zone? Yes. Clearly. And how do you know that? Clearly close. Yeah. Clearly. Close. Okay. And from where you're sitting, <clears throat> what, what is the speed limit before that? Before uh, heading eastbound? If you were heading eastbound, yeah. so where she was coming from? Yeah. Okay. It's where I was sitting was 30, and where uh, before that it's 40. Okay. Okay, so what did you do? I. Uh, Activated my, uh, I pulled out, activated my emergency blue lights, and I subsequently stopped the vehicle on uh, Dublin Road by Hatch. Dublin Road is also. Awesome. Okay, do you remember what kind of vehicle that was? Yeah, it's a white uh, Honda Walker, I believe. Okay. And we're, and we're, I'm sorry, again, where did you, uh, where did you stop that? I stopped the vehicle after the intersection where the lights are, uh, Dublin Road by Hatch. Okay. It's a safe spot for did you make contact with the driver? I did. And did you were able to identify him? I was. And how was that? I had a license. Okay. Did you have a conversation with her? I did. Okay. Could you, do you see her in the courtroom today? I do. Well, that's the uh, court they notice that, uh, well, could you point her out and describe her to? Uh, it's the lady sitting at the table next to the gentleman. Okay. What's she wearing? Uh, it's a black sweatshirt, I believe, with glasses. 
Okay. That's the court to take notice that uh, Officer Tanaka has identified Mr. Lyon. Yes, it will. Okay, and who, uh, who, who was she when you started writing the license? Uh, Renee. Okay, and so what did you do then? Uh, I explained the reason for the stop. <clears throat> and I uh, asked her if she knew the speed limit or how fast she was going. She stated that uh, she thought the speed limit was 40 and she thought the speed limit was 40. Okay. She knew what did you tell her? Uh, so right. it's 30, it's okay. And so what did you do that? Uh, she explained that she was coming back from uh, Ranch Vegas in her home. I returned to my cruiser, uh, wrote a summons, I wrote the summons, I cut her a break. Um, she was going 54 and a 30, I, I dropped it down to 50 and a 30, and wrote her a summons for 103.33 instead of the full $26.67 fine that was Okay. And did you uh, explain the summons to her? I did. Okay, nothing further at this time. Mr. Lang, do you have any questions you'd like to ask the officer here? I do. <laughs> so, can you repeat how you knew it was that I was allegedly speeding? What's that? Can you repeat how you knew I was allegedly speeding? You said you said radar, right? Yes, sir. So, was it was it a clocked radar? Have you clocked it? I don't understand. You, you clock radar, right? Like you can clock it 34 miles per hour. 34? Uh, what were you using to determine the speed, uh, Mr. Uh, the officer? The stationary radar that's in the cruise line. It wasn't a radar gun or anything, it was the radar that's in the cruise line. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with uh, the police equipment. Uh, so, how do you know it was fully accurate? I tested it in the morning. Okay. And uh, was I driving? Was I driving erratically or unsafely? Speed up. <clears throat> were there were there any complaints prior? Did somebody call and complain about my alleged speeding? About your driving? I'm sorry. About your speeding? Yes. You're asking if another person called and complained? Yes. Not that. So there, were, so there was just about nobody else on the road? No other traffic, really? I don't know if there's no other. In the area that we were, no, it was, you were the only guy. Right. So, that being said, did I hurt anybody? What's that? Did I hurt anybody with my vehicle? Not that I'm aware of. So, <laughs> Who is the alleged victim? Have I caused a victim here today? Repeat the question. Have I caused a victim here today? Have you caused a victim? Yes. I don't understand. If I've not hurt anybody, then there is no victim. So how exactly have I, have I committed a crime here? You were speeding. Is that, is that, All right. So, if you don't mind, I'm going to ask some more questions about the radar. Um, was it properly calibrated? Are you asking like that tested it in the former ship? That's calibration, right? Yeah, I, t I tested it internally in both ends. When was the device last? Is there an external third party calibration? Calibrated for the Peterborough PD on January 15, 2014. 
This calibration expires January 31st, 2015. Is there any way that something could have gone screwy in the radar by May? What was the last part of the question? Could, could the radar have been messed up in any way by May? It had been four or five months since it, since it had last been tested. Not that long ago. But it's possible. Not that I'm aware. Okay. Well then. Well, I appreciate you dropping the uh, the original speed down for a for a lower fine, but why not just a warning? I have discretion. I believe it's catch a big enough break as it was. No further questions. Well, Sam, a minute? No. Do you want them further? Two, two things, Your Honor. Go ahead. Okay. Let me approach. Yes. Take a look at that document. It's the document she just read to you. You see, it's a radar and calibrated by the next uh, third party, internal third party. Uh, this radar was calibrated for PWPD on January, excuse me, January 15th, 2014. The calibration expires January 31st. And, and the reason why, is it the reason why you check the calibration every day to make sure there's nothing wrong with it? That's correct. Okay, and on that day, was the calibration fine when you did your checks? It's functionally normally and properly when I checked. Your Honor, we ask that be entered as exhibit one. Any objection, Mr. Flynn? No. Okay, anything else, uh, uh Nothing further, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Flank, any other questions? I do have one more question. Do you remember me saying to you that I did not believe that I was going over 50 miles per hour? Do I remember that? Yes. I don't Well, I think Officer, the testimony a minute ago was that you said that uh, Ms. LeBlanc thought she was going about 40 miles an hour. That's what she That's said. That's what the speed limit was, yeah. That's correct. Is that what you were getting at, Ms. LeBlanc? Pretty much. And it does mention in these notes that he wrote uh, the report of action on the case. <clears throat> So, any other questions? <coughs> no further questions. Thank you, officer. Well, Step down. Thank you, officer. Sergeant, any other evidence the state wants to introduce here? State rush. Okay. Mr. Blank, do you have any evidence you want to introduce here? Circumstances, uh, I'm going to give more credibility in all cases to calibrated radar equipment than I am to people's own feelings about what their speed was or what their own speedometer may say at the time. And it does appear that the uh, officer has given you uh, uh, some consideration in this um, that would cut the speed uh, or the refine basically in half from what it would ordinarily be. So I'll impose a fine totaling 103.33 altogether, which includes the penalty assessment. Are you able to pay that today? No. Um, right. Is there any way we could reach a compromise on this? Well, I'm afraid the time for doing that has come and gone. So uh, the court's not in the business of negotiating the, the amount of the, of the fine. 
are you, uh, when, when are you going to be able to pay the fine? Um, well, if, if I must pay a fine, I would, be interesting, I would be interested in doing community service to pay that fine. Or I would also, <clears throat> I would also propose that this could go on file. Well, I'm not going to place it on file. I try to deal with these consistently with people here. Um, and I'm going to impose the, the fine that is indicated on the summons, given the consideration the officer's already given you. <clears throat> Are you working? Yes. Um, yes. And community service is completely out of question, is what you're saying? If you're working, yes, it is. OK. Then may I have 60 days? I can give you two weeks. Today's the um, 29th. I'll give you until Tuesday, the 14th of October. How do you think it went? That didn't go very well. <laughs> um, yes. I tried to negotiate, um, asked her to go on file. I knew I was going to be found guilty. Pretty obvious, but uh, I was going to ask her to go on file, bargain for community service even suspension of the fine on good behavior, but he was just not having it. I think, I think he knew. Anything you would have done it. differently? I had no idea what I was doing in the first place, so good enough, so good what, enough for a first time. What will you do differently next time? More research, just give him more trouble. Uh, maybe file for additional discovery, because it would have been nice to know that they had that up their sleeve. Also, one more thing that I want to point out, I got this in my discovery that I mentioned. What is that? This is the, this is what the cop wrote, his testimony, report of action on case. Does this look legible? This is not legible. It even says not legible. No, I wrote not legible. Too many people. All right, thanks. Anything else? We'd like to invite you to visit really freekeen.com. Okay. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com. I should be in Keene, New Hampshire with the Free Staters. Uh, Morris, and, uh, is she here? Do you wish to speak further? Thank you. Let's ask you to give your name and address. My name is Polly Morris, and I live at 18 Edwards Street here in Keene. And I would like to clarify that this letter was coming from me as a concerned citizen. It was not coming from the Manana Voices for Prevention organization. Um, the paper, the, the Sentinel sort of misconstrued that I was a mental health counselor, which I am not, and that my organization was a mental health and substance abuse organization, and it is not. I'm a substance misuse prevention coordinator, um, which I have experience working in the substance misuse field and have many trainings in substance er, in suicide prevention. So I have training and experience, but I'm not a mental health counselor, so I want to be clear. Um, my concern, um, however, was that um, in the normal morning process, something as public as display like that, a time frame needs to be, so it needs to have a cap time, because this kind of behavior in a community can, um, cause people to, uh, it perpetuates the idea of suicide ideology. So <coughs> folks might think that someone like Robin Williams, who is a, a very public figure, a very beloved actor, um, his death by suicide might trigger others to do the same, thinking that there's glamorizing or glorifying or just as an easy way out. And I don't mean that in the sense that it's an easy way out for anyone. But the behavior gets perpetuated by leaving something up so long. And one of the examples that I had given in my letter was that when a president dies, we lower our flags to half mass for 30 days. But there's a starting time and there's a stopping time. So that we have that significant amount of time to grieve and to mourn, to publicly express how we feel, and then it's time to move on, to move forward. So that was my intention. And I, I just was trying to start the process. I didn't know what it would entail. Okay. Um, a quick question, if I may. The letter we received had the Monadnock Voices for Prevention. Um, this letter had from them. So when you say you're not representing the Monadnock Voices, uh, I'm, can I'm you a, just clarify that? It, I'm going to clarify that I'm a prevention specialist. Yes. So through my job, I've been trained in substance misuse prevention and suicide trainings. Mm -hmm. However, the concern started as a concern of my own. OK. So this is not uh, an official 
this is not an official. Your, what you stated in this letter is not necessarily the position of the Monadnock Voices for Prevention. Correct. Right. Okay. Correct. Thank you for that clarification. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, does anybody have any questions uh, for Ms. Morris, uh, members of uh, the committee at this point? No. Um, I, uh, I don't know how this discussion will unfold this evening, but at, at this point I don't have any other questions at, at this point. But I just want to clarify, you're concerned that the memorial as it stands for the length of time it has been up can have an adverse effect on, on the community. Who, uh, now, when you say community, people in the community who may be depressed, substance abusing, prone to uh, suicidal ideation, and yes, and, uh, and and maybe active planning. Yes, but many folks like that who you uh, have experience working with. Well, I've that's what I've learned in some yes. of the trainings that I've taken. Yes. Um, Questions? No? Okay. Uh, thank, you. Right, thank you. Are there any members of... Uh, for staff. For staff, I do. For staff? Yeah. Okay. Councilor Arkin. Are we okay to go forward with asking staff now? Yeah. Okay. And then we'll go to the public. Okay. I guess I'll go to the city manager. Do we know who, own, who owns this building on the corner? where the sign of a pair of shoes has been painted? It is privately owned. I don't know the, I, can't, I, can't know the I, I don't know off the top of my head, but uh, we can certainly find out. But it's privately owned property. My observation is part of the memorial actually <coughs> is on private property. There are photographs and, and posters and I think writing that's actually on the building itself and then some on the sidewalk close to the building. That's correct. Yeah. Councilor um, I have a, a sort of comment or question, I guess, um, and that is, it's my understanding that um, for the Pumpkin Festival, which is October 18th and 19th, um, all the sidewalks are cleared. Is that correct? <clears throat> yes, as when the City Council gives permission to the Pumpkin Fest to have a certain area that's designated for their purposes, then yes, that's correct. The sidewalks are cleared uh, of anything that would impede their, their activities. So, B. So, um, is there a, a plan to um, move the, whatever, right. if, if we leave everything as is until the 18th or 19th, is there a plan to say take it to public works or something like that or I, I, I'm not aware of a particular plan the, the items that are there barely protrude onto the sidewalk I think if you walk by you'll notice that they, they might a few inches perhaps depending upon what the item might be uh, so I don't know that there's a plan per se in having a conversation with Polly about this when she called my office I indicated to her that I thought that either pumpkin fest or